Right, I'm going to begin, uh, John, just by saying, I mean, though primarily, obviously, we see this through the perspective of the parents, I really love the the, the kind of um, the storyline involving the, the, the children as well, this idea that kind of sharing those moments before they all set off to college and go their kind of separate paths. And I'm just wondering about you and whether you've always kept in touch with your old sort of school friends and if you... I have. Yeah. I have. Uh, m one of my closest friends is, is still from high school. I keep a, a very close tabs on a small group of people from high school. Uh, same with college. So... Uh, it's over over time. Relationships do change. There's a little bit in the movie about that, yeah. but uh, I think if if you share the same ideals and you both grow together, or you all grow together, there's no reason you can't stay connected. Uh, one of my favorite things about your characters is, is the fact he's quite he's got a sensitive soul. He, he's he, on the brink of crying on a few occasions yeah. in the movie. I was wondering, are you might when when it comes to films, are you much of a crier? Do you, do you get do, absolutely. do you cry? Yeah. Absolutely. I uh, I am moved emotionally by story, and I think that's why I love being a part of story. It, it doesn't mean that you just have to laugh or just have to want to put your brow down and kick ass. Being moved by story means you, you cry every once in a while or often, every time that, that something gets at you. So do you remember the last film you cried at? The last film I cried at, because uh, I cry on most of them, because I watch <laughs> a lot of movies on planes. Yeah. and I, I usually, always cry on planes. I usually cry <laughs> watching movies on the planes. Yeah. Uh, I watched uh, Blade Runner on the way over here and Big Short. I didn't cry at either one of those. Uh, but, man, I know it was on a plane, and it most likely was uh, around Christmas time on a flight from Australia back to the States. And uh, I mean, I think the, the film is, is it, what it does remarkably as well, Blockers, is it's very funny, but it has got a lot of heart to it as well. And Kay's done a wonderful job because getting that balance is, is quite a difficult thing for filmmakers to get right. And it, this is a real example here, isn't it, of, of giving first time female filmmakers a platform here to showcase their talent. Something that doesn't happen too often. Well, also, don't forget that Kay's a very gifted writer. Mm -hmm. And I think part of being a writer is understanding relationships. And when she has finally been able to get the opportunity to be a director, I think she just. She didn't short the importance of those relationships. And I remember when I had to go through the audition process to get the movie, she was very concerned about the relationship. And we, the audition process was reading a few scenes and then an hour long conversation with just her and I afterwards about my life, about uh, how I felt about certain things and my relationships, my current relationships. She, she had very good perspective of if people aren't interested in these characters and their ties, None of the jokes will land, and it won't be a good movie. So she definitely took the right approach. I mean, the, the comedy genre is one that you're really kind of, uh, you're, you've been involved with now quite a lot recently, and you're really sort of excelling it as well. I was wondering, I mean, was there almost, when you when you started getting into kind of cinema, was there almost a conscious move to, to make comedy deliberately to say, you know, to show your range? Because I guess there was always the idea when athletes sort of go into, into film that they're expected to be action heroes and stuff. Did you almost deliberately well, want to? you, you got to remember, I tried the action hero thing back in the early 2000s, and it was the Hindenburg. Uh, it just, it wasn't a good fit. And, and looking back on it, it's not that uh, I don't think I could have done it. It's just that I was already doing it in a live capacity. So I didn't find it as interesting. I think with the comedies, especially with stuff that's been put in front of me, it's such a difference from what I do every day in the WWE. That's what makes it intriguing. And it's just a different story. So it just so happens that all these movies have been comedies. But I'm drawn to the story. I'm drawn to like, wow, I would love to be a part of that story. It'll be fun and it's a good story. So it just so happens that most of these parts are R-rated comedies. And are there any sort of more genres you'd like to explore? I, mean, I don't, don't mean to fuel you. No, your... no. So if, I mean, um, Trainwreck and Sisters are comedies, Blockers are comedy. You take a movie like The Wall that's not. Ferdinand is a family animated movie. Bumblebee is, is not a comedy. Um, you know, I'm... I'm I'm hosting live stuff. I'm reading the news in the in the states. Like, it's not about a job. I don't want to limit myself to like I'm just doing this. I just want to be able to be passionate about what I do. I think making good stuff starts with you being invested in the material. Because yeah, I don't mean to, to fuel in the competition between yourself and Dwayne Johnson, but he did a musical recently. Can you can you sing? Can't sing. No. Can't <laughs> dance. Dwayne Johnson, a million. John Cena catching up. Yeah. <laughs> And uh, let's talk about Bumblebee very quickly. I mean, obviously, it's a sort of obviously Transformers spin-off. I mean, tonally, what can we expect from this? Is it go is it very much in line, do you think, with the kind of Michael Bay productions? Or has it gone down a kind of different path? Okay, so uh, we're going to talk again in the fall about okay. Bumblebee, and I'll, I'll be here for that. I can tell you that um, it's exciting for me to be part of a new presentation of the franchise, and I think people will love it. 
And just finally, then I have to ask just one wrestling yeah, question. Yeah, no, go regret uh, it. Undertaker, WrestleMania. Yeah. Do you reckon that could happen? <laughs> I, it's out of my hands. If you saw Monday Night Raw, I finally just, um, you know, I, I'm pretty much at a dead end. So I do not, I 100% do not mind going to WrestleMania as a fan. I will go. I will have obligations with the Hall of Fame and handshakes and whatnot. I'll be at TakeOver if I have to. I'll buy a ticket to WrestleMania. I'll hopefully be hitting beach balls the Monday after Raw and starting all those crazy chants. It's not my choice to make. There's, there's one guy who decides what that match is going to be, and that's The Undertaker. And that's what I did on Monday night. And it's, ob it's so obvious from the audience that they still want to see him and they want to see the match. So if, if he's up for it, I'm up for it. You heard Undertaker, come on. Let's do it. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thanks, man. Cheers. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Hey You Guys. Hey You Guys, huh? Hey you guys, Is yeah. that from the Goonies? It is indeed, yeah. Nice. Hey!